Good morning everybody, it's Friday today, last day of this week, 18th of June and a lovely sunny day outside uh, so I hope you're able to get out and about and get a wee bit of sunshine about yourselves um, I think the weather is to be not too bad for a few days I don't think all of um, the UK has got such good weather because uh, I'm in a wee craft group that um, people put a wee comment on first thing in the morning and some people complaining about very heavy rain in different parts of um, wherever they stay but I think we're lucky it's not like us to have sunshine when other people don't it's usually the other way about so I hope everybody's doing all right today and um, have got good things planned for a sunny day and maybe things that do not involve football but I doubt that very much I think most people will be having a wee look at what happens there later on today as well so I've been having a read from Joshua and today we're on to Joshua chapter 13 and i um, just going to read a wee bit from that chapter uh, and it's all about the land still to be taken. Joshua was now very old, the Lord said to him, You are very old, but there is still much land to be taken. And then on to chapter, uh, verse 8, and this is the, the division of the territory east of the Jordan. The tribes of Reuben and Gad and the other half of the tribe of Manasseh had already received the land that Moses, the Lord's servant, had given them. It was on the east side of the Jordan River. Their territory extended on the edge of the Amar Valley and the city in the middle of that valley and included all of the plateau from Medeba to Dibbon. It went as far as the border of Ammon and included all the cities that had been ruled by the Amorite king Sihon who would ruled at Heshbon. Moses had given no land to the tribe of Levi, as the Lord had told Moses they were to receive as their possession a share of the sacrifices burned on the altar to the Lord God of Israel. Moses had given a part of the land to the families of the tribe of Reuben as their possession. Their territory extended to Ariar on the edge of the Arnon Valley and the city in the middle of that valley and included all the plateau around Medeba. Among those whom the people of Israel killed was the fortune teller Balaam, son of Beor. The Jordan was the western border of the tribe of Reuben. These were the cities and towns given to the families of the tribe of Reuben as their possession. Moses had also given a part of the land to the families of the tribe of Gad as their possession. Their territory included Jazer and all the cities of Gilead, half the land of Ammon as far as Aror, which is east of Rabbah. Their land extended from Heshbon to Ramah, Mizpah and Batonim, and the border of Lodabar. In the Jordan Valley it included Beth Haram and other cities, the rest of the kingdom of the king Sihon of Heshbon. Their western border was the Jordan River as far north as Lake Galilee. These were the cities and towns given to the families of the tribe of Gad as their possession. Moses had given a part of the land to the families of half the tribe of Manasseh as their possession. Their territory extended to Mahanim and included all of Bashan, the whole kingdom of Og, the king of Bashan, as well as all 60 of the villages of Jir and Bashan. It included half of Gilead and other capital cities of Og's kingdom in Bashan. All this was given to half the families descended from Machir, son of Manasseh. This is how Moses divided the land east of Jericho and the Jordan when he was in the plains of Moab. But Moses did not assign any land to the tribe of Levi. He told them that their possession was to be a share of the offerings to the Lord God of Israel. Amen. And God bless this reading from Joshua chapter 13. And as I said yesterday, it makes you a wee bit um, think of how the children used to feel when you asked them to read something and there were words in it that they didn't know how to say. Uh, lots of names of places and people in these chapters of Joshua that um, probably a very not close approximation of um, what they actually do say. Uh, and some of them are just going to pass over because I think you can't even get your tongue around some of them. So, I hope everybody's doing okay today. Remember, there's no message on a Saturday and the service from Wednesday this week will be on um, Facebook and on the website. 
uh, on Sunday and that will be the last week that that will happen because oh, obviously next week there is no Wednesday service so we can't record to the service in advance from now on that but that was one of the good things about the Wednesday afternoon was that we were able to record the service on a Wednesday and it was ready to go on on Sunday uh, before this before Sunday actually happened <laughs> So we can't do that now. So um, if you have been in the habit of watching the Sunday service on a Sunday, you're going to have to wait till in the afternoon now by the time uh, the service is over, by the time we get home. And um, the thing that takes the longest is the loading of it onto, um, onto wherever it loads onto on the internet. So that's what takes the longest. Um, sometimes it takes a couple of hours to do that. There's nothing else you can do. You've just got to wait. So if you've been in the habit of watching the service on a Sunday, then um, sorry, but you're just going to have to wait a wee bit longer, starting from not this Sunday, but next Sunday, because we won't have the ability to record the service in advance. So anything you need, anything you want to know, anyone you want to know about, just let me know. Um, and... Um, I've had some information to say that um, it's Jean McNabb's funeral on Monday and uh, the funeral cortege will go, go past the church at half past two on Monday. If anyone um, would, would like to stand and pay respects, that's what they're going to do. They're going to pass the church at half past two on Monday. And um, if you know anyone that might want to know that, then perhaps you could pass that information on to them. So um, have a good weekend, everybody. I hope the weather stays this way. Uh, we're not we're going out on Saturday night now with um, friends for uh, a meal we haven't seen for a long time. So uh, that'll be our weekend. I hope you've got good things planned. And we will be back on Monday and we'll see you then. Bye.